Um, all right, so uh, first up is to set the municipal tax rate, which we have to do every year, and we have to actually have it out tomorrow, right? So. Well, I'm going to print the tax bills tomorrow because they legally have to be mailed 30 days prior. So our plan is I will print them tomorrow, then they will be stuffed and mailed on Wednesday and Thursday. That way they're out 30 days prior. The only thing I didn't get a chance, so the, the uh, municipal tax rate will be... Uh, 1.0664 and what was last year's rate? Last year's rate was the 1.0408 right. plus 0.0041. Okay. It would have been the two of those together. Teresa, I was kind of curious if you could speak to why such a jump um, and maybe that's not a big jump. It just seemed to me like a bigger jump than I'm used to seeing. Um, I'm just going to put Paul on speaker. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I think, I think hey, Paul, sorry. We're going to put you on speaker. I don't, I don't know what's going on. We're having. Yeah, I, don't either. I don't either. It just won't, it won't work for me. I All think right. initially. So I'm going to, we're just starting with the tax rate. So I'm just going to put you between Chris and I. Okay, thanks. I think initially, Lindley, we had talked about 2%, which gets confused with two cents, which typically our tax rate and percentages line up almost identical. So if we do say 1%, it is one cent. Um, so, so it actually went up, uh, you know, just a hair over two cents. And I know we had budgeted for two cent or 2% 2 increase, which was just a hair over two cents. Um, and then like Teresa and I were looking at the, uh, the grand list did, did actually go up slightly, not enough to really make an impact in the tax rate. Like, remember the previous year, we we were gonna go up two cents, but then the municipal grand list came in. Um, it went up to the point where it covered the whole two cents for us. So I think that's where where we were at for this year. And, and I know overall, when you count, this is this municipal tax rate, but when you count the whole tax rate, including education, um, it's gone down by about four cents. When you factor in the education or with, piece of yeah, it. Yeah, 1.64%. It's gone down if you look at the education. It went from 2.6 right. last year to 2.56 this year. So there's a little bit of difference in the local agreement rate, and the local agreement rate is the tax that we have to pay on the veterans exemption. We have to pay school tax on the veterans exemption. We also have to pay school tax on the Grange. That's the other exemption that gets voted every five years. Mm -hmm. So that went up by a hair, 0. 0.0040 to 41. So, or actually, I mean, it dropped. So, excuse me. So, and the state, of course, sets the education rate. So, um, so overall, the homestead tax rate is up is down 1.64% and the non-residential tax rate is down 2.07%. So overall, the tax rate didn't go up this year. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. And it will be starting the reappraisal next July. July? So, yep, July is when the reappraisal starts. I double checked today with Mo and Judy. And that's like a two-year process, you said? That's a, yep, a two-year rolling reappraisal. So if it's next July 2023 and it'll be done by the end of 2024? Or, yep. Yeah. So, well, not to jump off topic quick, but <laughs> okay. when that does happen, because you, you were talking just on what was going on in Brookfield yeah, and yeah. stuff. So, mm -hmm. so let's say it ends December 2024. Now we've already set our budget. And then the when do those appraisals then kick in? Does that kick in the next physical year of July, or do they kick in instantly? They don't kick in instantly because they you have to lodge your grant list in April. So what would happen is, depending when they finish the reappraisal, the tax rate and they had to have and had their grievances, like the tax rate would most likely it would begin in that tax bill that's issued in July of 2020. So we could three, potentially get in six. the same issue where we've already set our budget. Yeah. Then you have the reappraisal. Right. And you could be, I don't want to use the word overtaxing, but. 
You could be you under. Could be, yeah. You could be taxing at a higher rate sure. for let's, about six months until you develop your new budget, right? Well, it, or under taxing, I think, which is right. what's going to happen to them because, but they set a budget knowing that their tax rate was going to go up because they hadn't done a reappraisal, or that their grand list was going to go up because they knew that they hadn't done a townwide reappraisal since 2007. Mm. So when they did their budget, they increased their budget significantly, like 9%. Cost-wise? 9%. Oh. They increased their budget, and I think knowing that obviously their grant list was going to increase. Oh, so okay. they took it into consideration. Otherwise, you're So we're right. going to have to be really careful with this budget. Not this next one. The, the one. next budget season on making sure we kind of line up our costs where, where we think the grand list is going to come mm -hmm. into. And we might have some information okay. by then, too, being that it's a rolling reappraisal. And yeah, just to be clear, be for the record, we are always careful about our budgets. Well, we are, but... <laughs> but we will be could, extra careful, yeah. So, and I think we might have some in information. Yeah. yeah, because you're right. Otherwise, some people may have not basically set their... They could have done more oh, than right. they had... You know what I mean? They maybe they could have done more, knowing that the grand list would go up, and they may have missed that boat that first year. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. But um, so yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to get off topic, but no, it was no, on no, my it's brain fine. Well, it's, it's we not because ahead, it's but. not off topic because it makes sense. So, um, and obviously, again, the state sets the tax rate. Some of these will change because mm. people that haven't filed their homestead yet, um, people that may be considered. Uh, non-residents will become residents. So there's always a little bit of change as we move mm -hmm. forward. But. Okay. Any other discussion in regards to the tax rate? Any questions, Paul? Uh, no, no. Move to approve. Okay, Dave's moved to approve. Second. Okay, Lindley second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <coughs> And next up, we had the uh, discussion in regards to a purchase of uh, new piece of equipment. Um. So we had an equipment committee meeting a, few, a couple weeks ago, and then we met again today. The suggestion at the last meeting was to increase the annual appropriation just because, and this was a good example of that, how much equipment prices have gone up. We purchased basically the same vehicle. Um, in 2020, 2021, for 198,000, and we're looking at purchasing the same vehicle for 257,000. Mm -hmm. Also, that includes a, a belly blade, but which is about 12 grand, but still, just shows you what equipment rate prices are doing. So I updated this page so that you could see the ending balance was accurate for 66,972. They have not yet decided on the wheeled used excavator. They're waiting for an oil sample. And they may rent it for a week just to really see. I know not everybody on the equipment committee is excited about mm. about this specific piece of equipment, but we'll see how that goes. But uh, people that were present today, Jeff Gilman, Ray Blakeney, Mo Brigham, uh, they were all in favor of purchasing this Western Star. The interesting thing was not everybody is even getting a vehicle this quarter. so. ATG Westminster was was able to order one truck. And when they called other people to get, they wanted a similar you know, vehicle, they said they were not getting a vehicle this quarter and they didn't even know, in some cases, some dealerships didn't even know when they were even going to get one. So the only changes we need to make are to let them know, you know that it needs to be green and not red if they're going to go with the belly blade, which they recommend that we do. And there was one other small change. Um, but other than that, they were the only ones around with a piece of equipment. So um, originally, was this, was this Freightliner originally planned to be? No, it wasn't. But they've dumped it back. Oh, Paul, he's here. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? So they had... Um, Where was this originally scheduled to come It was originally out? slated to come out in a couple more years, but they dumped $10,000 into that vehicle yeah, last year, and it is still... Um, they're still having serious electrical issues and other things, so they don't want to dump any more money into it. Mm -hmm. So the bet, the bet, um, excuse me, the dump body had been replaced because someone had had an accident, and we replaced the bed 
um, you know, because we had an insurance claim. Mm -hmm. But um, but we basically got nine years out of it. Yeah. Yep. And Which the, I, that body is going on in the future. Well, that's what they had hoped, but it's already it was a. Um, A Fairfield, the body was, and it's already peeling, and they're having issues with it. So I figured, look, we spent a thousand bucks on it basically because we just paid our insurance deductible, and they're giving us fifty thousand for the trade, which is more than we thought that they would give us. And um, but they, the feeling of the equipment committee was, look, we're just throwing good money after bad to keep into this vehicle. So they had actually had juggled the schedule a little bit. So, mm -hmm. so that was the recommendation of the of the um, equipment committee was to get, they want to, so trade for 50, they want to deduct $10,200 because they want to, they want standard, they don't want an automatic, but then they wanted to add 12,950 to get the 11 foot power verse underbody scraper with one inch mold board. So basically it's a belly blade that they feel that they can use, um, you know, spreading materials and, and at different times when maybe they don't need the grader out. Currently, AJ is the only one who knows how to operate one. So the other guys will be learning. Um, and like I said, they were saving 10 grand by going to standard. That was what they wanted and Mo and Jeff agreed with their decision to go to standard. They felt like they had more control over the vehicle, so. So their plan is to, they need to meet again and they will meet again once they get more information about the used equipment and then they need to sit down and start looking again at, um, you know, the grader and excavator and kind of look back, I'll kind of look a little bit more at it. Morgan had a different take on, we moved, or they moved the um, sidewalk plow, which was something we thought that they needed, that they wanted sooner, but Morgan disagreed. He put some work into it and didn't feel like it was a priority. So they're gonna keep that a little bit longer. So, you know, sometimes different road foremans have different takes on the equipment, so. So anyway, so they're, the equipment committee um, said yes, they want to move forward with the purchase of the 2023 Western Star to replace the 2013 Freightliner. Move to approve. And Dave moved to approve it. Any, fur okay, any further discussion on it? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, <clears throat> I think the only unfortunate piece here is we were trying our best to spread those two big purchases out because we had somehow got ourselves in the position where we were buying these one year over the other. I know. Well, because they bought them in um, two years. But at twice. we were hoping to spread I know. that out another year or whatever. But we were. We're going to be like assuming it. the trucks all stay the same. Yeah. I know. It's, it's going to be another, you know, buy one one year and buy one the next. Type I know. They And they wanted to do the same thing, but... Or just like it doesn't make sense to keep, you know, what are you going to do, throw another? So the adjustments that we're looking at at appropriation time 5, is going up another 5000 Yeah, what I had done originally. Basically 5000 a year for. Yeah, what we had done, I had done originally was said 115 115 120 120 mm -hmm. And then just with the price of equipment and stuff, the last equipment committee meeting, they were like, we can't do this. We need to increase it. And obviously there may be times, you know, within here that we may be able to adjust. But or keep it frozen one year, but with the price difference already, this, mm. it's crazy. Okay. So they also are agreeing that it's, that they are gonna have to make friends with used equipment. You know, they just can't, they're just not sure that this used piece of used equipment, this wheeled excavator is what's right for them. So that is let, yet to be determined. Now are we still pretty confident that we're gonna get Another seven or eight years out of the greater? That, you know, remember they dumped, <clears throat> not dumped, but they put right. money into it a few years ago because mm -hmm. the equipment committee at the time felt that the stuff that was coming down the pike they weren't happy with and it was very much computerized and they just felt like what, that they were better off putting the money into this greater um, and hanging on to it. So it, it's a big purchase and I know they struggle with it. So, but. Like I tell them, you know, it's it's a schedule and we, we have to adapt. We're gonna have to move things. And mm -hmm. we also, I know that uh, 
Morgan and maybe Hazen too, we're looking at different options. What if you leased? What if you, you know, own different things like that? Which may be something like that may be worth looking at. Um, it might be more affordable to, because yeah. by the time we go to purchase one of those things, it's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. a big number. Okay. Alrighty. Anything further on the highway equipment? Okay. Uh, then we have discussion of the internal financial controls just checklist. I did send you all a link, all the select board members, including Jean, um, a link today about a training for select board members, if any of you are interested. So this is something that's required every year. And so you see it every year. Pam fills it out. I mm -hmm. went over it with her. And basically, you're just signing it that you've received it. And it kind of tells you who does what. You know, obviously, yep. we're in the process of being audited now. And, you mm -hmm. know, they, they want to know this, too, to make sure basically the same person isn't depositing the money, writing the check, going to the bank. You know, <laughs> bad things happen that way. So obviously, we don't, we don't operate that way. But if you have any specific questions about it. Um, are, are there any... Um, are there any controls that are here that have shown up on the audit list as problematic or something we should be looking to adjust or? I don't think so. I was written up because I didn't get, sometimes when I'm making corrections or doing journal entries, I might only have my own signature on it and not somebody mm -hmm. else's, but I don't think that's in here. Um, Nope. If I just did written policies, we do have that. I don't know about that. Nope. Um, oh, sometimes our bank accounts and fund balances. Dtree does balance all the bank accounts on a monthly basis. So, but if a fund balance doesn't necessarily have its own cash with it, that fund balance may not be reconciled on a monthly basis. But um, other than that, no, I can't think of anything on here. Usually it's because my, something's off, like they had to make an, you know, audit entry for beginning balances or any, something like that, but not on here, no. Okay. All right. Any, any other discussion in regards to the internal financial controls checklist? If not, just need, no. just need a motion to accept. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So you just need to sign it right here. But just, you're just signing that you received it. Oh, okay. Just one board member, just yep. myself? Yep, just you. Somebody. Whoever wants to go before the judge? Whoever wants to go before the <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and then we had, um, well, I mean, um, so we have Kyle Cartwright that's going to formally resign from the Planning Commission, but Zoe Cartwright um, is going to move from a part-time to a full-time member on that. Yeah, and the Planning Commission was fine with that at our last meeting. So the Planning Commission has to approve it, then it goes to the select board. Because weren't they, were they both? alternate members or yeah, they, something? Yeah, Kyle or? started and Zoe was his alternate. Oh, gotcha. So that's how okay. it worked. And then he's gotten really busy with, you know, biking and the rec club, and, or rec, um, mm -hmm. excuse me, committee. So she said at the last meeting, I'm going to be the regular. So, and okay. of course the planning commission was fine with that. So, but then you guys have to bless. Okay. So just need a motion to approve Zoe Cartwright to the planning commission full time? Move to approve. Okay, move by Dave. Second. Okay, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. All right. Can you see, okay. Yeah, there it's just a clear. There you no go. I tried deal. to turn it down. They're there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we had a formal resignation by Cecil Washburn in regards to the cemetery foreman slash commissioner. Yeah. Um, I believe that he is still doing the digging and some of the equipment, manual labor type things, but no longer being the commissioner. Right, he's still, he's digging graves. 
And, um, but what we're gonna need is he has agreed to continue to dig graves and he's paid for that by Day's Funeral Home or whoever the service is. But what he will no longer do is locate the lot and mark out the lot. So that has to happen by a cemetery commissioner, um, which is the select board. All along, we thought he was a cemetery commissioner, but apparently he was the foreman. So he actually recommended Dave Eddy. He thought that Dave Eddy would be good at that. Um, but I told him that we, the select board would have to decide. So currently, I'm not aware of any funeral, but you, but somebody needs to agree to, to do it. You'll have to go to the cemetery, locate the lot, mark it out, find the cornerstones, and I'm not sure, but you may also have to sign the burial certificate. I'll have to double check on that with Pam. Can I have a second for <laughs> Cecil, second Cecil's motion that it be Dave yeah. Eddy? Yeah, I, I don't know. I heard Cecil's that I'd like to second that. Yeah, yeah. I heard Dave just ended one job on the board. Well, I, I, also, I don't, you know, if we don't, if we don't accept Cecil's recognition, oh, resignation. resignation, then he's going to be there anyways, right? Yeah. So <laughs> he said no way. I guess we can look at it two ways. Mm -hmm. I saw Cecil working on the wall on Jerry Goldman today. Yes, he had agreed that he had started that, so he was agreeing to, you know, take care of that. But I, um, I didn't see it. Have we formally put that out there? Um, no. For no, because you hadn't accepted okay. his resignation yet. I did. I have approached a couple of people, but so far, no takers. And I um, think that, so, anyways. At this point, would it be best for us to go through the normal process and see if there are any but you still, someone in the takers? And then in the meantime, if something does come up, then we on an emergency. You have to, because you're the Somebody will have to go out there and do it. Yeah, so we'll be looking, apparently looking for a cemetery foreman, not a commissioner, because you guys are the commissioners by the wording of that, of that policy. So um, he, it was unfortunate. He was under the impression that they had, that he was a commissioner and that they'd basically, I think someone had verbally told him, they'd basically said, here, you do this. And well, then when they passed a policy, he didn't see it. So, um, Anywho, so yes, in the meantime, as cemetery commissioners, it's your responsibility to mark the graves and... Okay. So those of us on screen can't see if Dave is having any reaction to any of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like I, I don't hear anything from Dave. <laughs> he's no longer here. He got up and walked, he got up and walked <laughs> away. He's just, he's not saying a thing. <laughs> So he, just first we're just next to him, you would the head. probably true. <laughs> so so first we'll just need a motion to accept Cecil's resignation. Move to accept the regret. Okay. Dave, Dave moved it. Lindley second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then I guess the second part of that is: is there anybody on the board that would like to? Take that in the short term while we locate a cemetery foreman, or do we want to? I would, I would do it, if, but I'd have no idea what needs to be done. So Cecil would have to agree, or at least once or twice, to walk me through it. I, I think that he would, especially because he suggested you. Um, I, mean, I know where my law is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> but you're not going to need it for a very long time. So, uh, right. but um, so yeah, I'm sure that he will. I mean, he'd suggested you. Forever. No, we'll advertise, and um, I've been trying to. End of October. I've been. I'll give you till end of October, but we'll have to discuss it again. Okay. So Dave, Dave will do it in the short term, kind of like. And I'll advertise. A few of us did the health commissioner there thing in the short term, and then, then we'll look for a permanent solution. Yeah, I'll advertise now, and I'm okay. still trying to. And they don't have to wait till they walk over. No, I know. I, I know. And I'm still trying yeah. to talk him did, back into coming Did Cecil back. have any individuals that he could recommend? or? No. Well, he won, and I approached the guy uh -huh. and the gentleman, and he said, nope. He didn't. He uh -huh. Well, because he felt that you as a board maybe didn't back Cecil and so he didn't want to be the next in line to inherit that so he said no.
gotcha. but, so, but I tried, and I'm still working on Cecil. <laughs> Every time I see him, I'm <laughs> trying to soften him up. So. No, I know. But I'm still, but he has so much knowledge about. It, I really want him to come back. But. No. Oh yeah, no. It just happened to be the person that Cecil had mentioned. Um, because he already cares for a cemetery near his home. So I asked him, I'm like, oh, you know, what do you think about this gentleman? And he's like, oh, no, he'd be good if he'll do it. And then when I reached out to him, he said no. But no, we'll all advertise for a cemetery for him. And then Dave Eddy, I'll put a main note that has to go back on the schedule in October. Back on agenda. But hopefully by then we've long had someone volunteer. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, I guess it's too bad that Cecil feels that the select board wasn't backing him. And I guess, I guess the way I had interpreted our solution is more of a win-win for him on, yep. you know, either either the artificial flowers and the picking up of them is going to work, um, you know, the weekend after Labor Day. Or it's not, and then we're going to change the rules, right? So I, you know, I guess my vision, anyways, was it was one way or the other. It was going to make his life better, um, but maybe not instantly right. today. But you know, after Labor Day. Oh well, yeah. So. In hindsight, thinking about it after we got it, I said, you know, this is the time that we're going to allow this to happen. Is when the real problem is. It's not so much after Labor Day. It's Memorial Day through the summer when the mowers are uh, and for whatever reason they're not going to, they're doing it cheap enough so they're not going to stop and pick up every little piece of thing. They're just going to and there it is all over the place. So Which it might we could have gone a lot, a lot right. more and say okay it will need to be secured Totally secured on the gravesite. Well, we did say it does need to be well, secured. It said that we need to create rules, and that was how I tried to get Cecil to. I'm like, oh no, but we, you and I, because you, you, their motion said that they they could do it based on rules created by the cemetery foreman and the cemetery commissioner. Well, Cecil said no way that he wasn't going to be involved because he was resigning. So we still have to create those rules. So I well, will that put might that. Be, that might be something to think about when we're creating them. Yeah. Because we had talked about there was a couple of different fastening systems. Yes. Because we have a, we have a couple of different very hooks good or whatever person that. to do that job if we can coax him back. Yeah. So I'll put, well, so I'll do, put that back on the agenda for next time that we need to put rule creation back on um, agenda regarding stones and I mean flowers. has there been um, a movement of artificial flowers back into the cemetery since the last board meeting? Well I did receive a call yeah, from see. one of the <clears throat> ladies that was present asking if she could come and get her flowers back and I said yep by Tuesday because then they're all going in the trash and she came and took five dollars worth of plastic stems and uh, was going to go put them back on but I said to her specifically you agreed at the meeting that and it was you want your idea about you know shepherd's hooks and putting them close to the stone I said mm -hmm. if you have a bunch of stuff laying around they're not getting off to weed whack around and move all your stuff that was so a she, great idea I think that shepherd's hook thing or Jacob, so she yeah so she it. said that but I have not been up to the cemetery I drove past East Bethel and there was nothing there yeah and um, but I so I think really the bigger activity is Fairview so I need to go up and see mm -hmm. what it looks like and I will say um, that the signs are still up that say no artificial flowers because I asked Cecil if he took them down. So we should I get, won't so we should get, <laughs> we should get. <laughs> so I need to get them down, <laughs> but I haven't yet. I'll well, have maybe, maybe the trade off is at the next meeting, if we can formalize the rules for them, it could be you take one sign down, you put another one up that says artificial flowers approved <clears> with <throat> the use of blah, blah, blah. Shepherd's hook or whatever mm -hmm. device or something That's, like that. I mean, I, I think we should. Uh, I'd like to visit a place or whatever to see what someone else has done with that shepherd's hook because mm. in my mind, I, I'm very 
terrible at visualizing. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, you can put that on the back of the stone, it hangs over the stone so the flowers are there and, there's, and it's a piece of steel so the weed whacker doesn't hurt it. Right. That's what I'm envisioning. I yeah. was going to go up and check out their stone since it That's was, what it is. It's since it was um, Elizabeth Hook. Bridge's idea, okay. I was going to go up and see how it looked because she came to get the flowers and ask. See, now, a lot of places, including Cherry Hill, they want you to put in a flush marker. They don't want any upright monuments anymore. So that the, there is no weed whacking. They just zip right over it. Mm -hmm. So the shepherd's hook will slow them down, right. but it still will only be a, whatever yes. piece of steel. You're right, and that diameter, it's mm. not, they're not very big. And so even, even if we were to go so far as to, who the hell did that? What? The balloon, the... Oh, eek, I don't know, I didn't even notice it. <laughs> I don't know why. I, well, anyway, sorry. That's just, okay. I don't know if it was up there from prom or from the memorial service that happened this weekend here. Uh, well, anyway, if we might even be able to, um, in the rules, make strong suggestions about this is what you need to use. Yep. And maybe even go so far as to make it available for purchase. Well, they can buy them locally at, I think, Bethel Mills, Central Supplies. I know, but then you've got four foot high, five foot high, three well, foot high. Well, I think high, you're going to have to, I think setting a height is a, is part of the rules, is a good idea. They can also get them from Dandelion Acres, I think. that. Um, but that's a good idea, Dave. So I'll put it on the agenda for next time. And um, in the meantime, I will, before that, I'll go up to Fairview and yeah. look at their stone and see... And she's the only one I know of who is going to do it. So I. Fair, so fair view, fair that's view. the one on the way to Randolph, right? Yeah. That's that's a horribly looking uh, cemetery in the old section. We were up there last year, and it's like a third of the stones are broken, knocked over, and I said, "Boy." <laughs> I know. Well, I was working with Cecil. We just got. I just got the application to get some stones repaired, and um, now I'm not sure if he'll do that grant with me or not. So. Um, this 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 past weekend, I had the opportunity to to visit a cemetery where my folks are down in Rhode Island, and I chatted with the cemetery commissioner down there, and I got from him what they use for guidelines for artificial flowers and whatnot, very specific about dates and exactly how to attach them, and and I think that we can use some of these. Um, policy decisions that they've already made down there this is granted this is a huge you know cemetery but i think that we might be overthinking it uh by trying to deal with the shepherd's hooks and and all these different kinds of fasteners and all this kind of stuff so i'll make copies of that and send it to each of the select board members you a, a lot of it we won't use but i think some of it is good uh food for thought about how to be specific I want to say you can use a shepherd hook or you can attach this way or you can attach that way or whatever. No, you will do it this way. I think that's right. So did you hear Dave? He's saying he agrees that it should be very specific. Yeah, that'd be great, Paul. I did. I did. That would be great if you could send us all copies. Sure. Thank you. Sure. All right, I'll make a note. Look for Paul's email. Okay. Now that I'm the new foreman. <laughs> now that you're the new, you're still a, no, you're, you're, you're just, oh, in, 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 <laughs> in, you, you are just uh, acting as the cemetery commissioner. All right. And then we had the purchasing policy that we had approved at the last meeting with some edits. And now we just, for the most part, just need the signatures on it, correct? Yes, because I hadn't uh, bought I had, I had not brought with me, excuse me, at the last meeting a clean copy, which was my bad. So I put the date that you adopted it. Um, so if you guys, uh, Paul and uh, Lindley, you know, just I'll leave the policy because there's only two signatures on it. So we'll just need you two to sign it at some point. Next week to do so. I won't be back in town until later. That's fine. Nope, no big deal, huh? We'll hang on to it. Um, All right. Thank you. Um, I'll be in the at some point in time. Yep. Yep, perfect. Thank you. 
All right. And any anything else under the American Rescue Plan money? Um, no, just I have the RFP out, and I think the prices are due back July 20th. So the next meeting, we should have the RFPs for the generator and the sewer pumps. And um, so we'll have an idea of that what amount of money we're talking about for those. Is there an update on the fire lane situation? We talked about doing an update at the next meeting. Yep, actually, I just I just barely sent an email tonight to Erica, um, uh, one of the residents of Fire Lane, and I had made a spreadsheet, and Kelly went through and updated it so that it listed every property owner, everybody's, um, what they had for zoning permits, what they had for acreage, parcel number, that sort of thing. And a lot of the people up there <clears throat> did not require zoning permits because if they just made it, um, you know, they didn't really change anything. They didn't expand their property. Some people had have zoning permits, but if they just did a remodel and they didn't add an addition, they didn't need a zoning permit. Um, one of the things that she did was she had quoted the rule, uh, the one of the districts, and said that we were allowing too much, you know, we were violating our own zoning policy, but we weren't. I mean, if people... If you look under the districts, it lists specifically what are your um, permitted rights and what are your conditional use rights. So if it's a conditional use, it goes to the DRB. So if they adhere to that, those standards, then or they're an existing small lot, we can't legally not, you know, issue them a zoning permit. Um, they, she did have a question about one property in particular and wanted, you know, about a curb cut and this and that, but they don't need a curb cut because they're on a private road. If they'd come off from a town road, we would have issued a curb cut. Um, also, people write on their policies or their permit applications whether or not there's a slope issue. We don't go look at every single permit before it's issued. So if someone had lied on their application about whether or not there was a steep slope, but it didn't appear to be because there was a site visit done, um, one of the other issues that she had listed was saying that there was, we were allowing too much development on a private road, but the zoning bylaw that she was quoting was about subdivisions that didn't even apply to what she was quoting it as. So um, I did send her all of the information, and I had sent her a prior email with the lieutenant commander's name, number, email for the state police, uh, Dan Mason, and for a and R, and we had contacted him about some issues. The only issue we currently have, possibly have, and I'm calling tomorrow, someone is building a home up there, but they're living in a camper, which we did not know. <clears throat> so we have since amended the zoning permit application and actually are making people tell us if they're where they're residing while they build their home. Because if they're residing in a camper, for over a certain amount of time, then they have to get a permit from the DRB. So, um, and that didn't happen because we didn't know. A lot of times people will tell us. So um, I'm gonna call tomorrow for one of the people building a house up there to see when they think they're getting in the house and go over the current zoning regulations about campers. Uh, it may be too late because by rights, we would have had to issue a zoning permit or referred it to the DRB within 30 days and we didn't. So it may be a um, new point. But, we had not heard back from Dan Mason, the Agency of Natural Resource Enforcement Officer. I had Kelly call a &R last week. He was on an extended vacation. He's either going to be back this week or next, and he's usually very, you know, precise, chop chop, and he will contact someone right away. So I did send her an email and then um, made a copy of the email and put it in the box so that I could put it in your packet next time along with the information. So I did tell her if she needed any more information to let us know. And, um, and I go from there. Well, I did see that there's a property that comes, yeah, is coming up for sale. It was on the front porch forum. Um, Tony Vassar, I didn't know if that was part of that whole um, bedroom, one bath camp. Yep. They, they, um, it's, that's not, I mean, it's one of the properties up there, but not one of the um, police action well, issues. I think, I think, okay. isn't, it, isn't it a camper that's for sale? I think it's a camp. It's a camp. It's a one bedroom camp, one bedroom, one bath camp. Yep. That's what um, it said in the zoning. 
okay. regs. So we did provide her that information. As far as some of the other issues, obviously, um, you know, there's no road maintenance agreement. It's a private road, and unfortunately, a lot of it is is civil or police matter. So I'm hoping that um, things have been worked out up there. Okay. Thank you for the update with that. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else on the town manager report, Teresa? Let me look. Okay. No, I'm just working on you know the planning commission. Oh, and yeah, the family fun Fridays. Uh, I'm going to get you the schedule because they had their first one this last Friday. It went really well, and they're doing one another one next week. Um, so hopefully. Select board members even you know could buzz by. I think that there's one every Friday this month except for one Friday. Mm -hmm. There's not, and but I'll make sure you guys get the schedule. Um, so tax bills go out, and that's it. So so far, so good. And we had the select board meeting minutes from the 27th. Is there any amendments to that, or are we good to approve as noted? I'm good. Move to approve as printed. Okay, Dave, move to accept. Second. Lindley, second. All in favor? Uh, aye. All right. Uh, there were a couple other uh, communications in there with the um, Planning Commission and Energy, I believe, um, that I saw in there, and the uh, and the Ford Best Committee. The um, the last thing I just wanted to bring up is I have I have a an issue with our next scheduled meeting on Monday the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. I know Gene currently won't be there. Um, I don't know if a change of date helps him or not, but I know, I know that I won't be able to attend. Um, also, won't be able to attend, but I won't have any flexibility. I'm gonna. This is the week that I'm up in the wilderness for ten days. Um, so, if a schedule change for you guys works, you should do it. Just know that you then have three members not available for the Monday meeting. So I didn't know. I, I know on my end. So then we'll need to do it the 26th. I know on my end, the Monday before or the Monday after doesn't work for me either. I got a couple of Monday stuff going on. Um, Tuesdays are available. I can do the 26th. Can can you do the July 26th? Sound like Lindley's uh, going to be out that whole week, no matter yeah. what, right? Do, do you know, Julie? Will Jean be available for Tuesday? I'm just trying to look. Hold on a minute. I can't remember if he said that was just a Monday thing or if there was multiple days I, scheduled it's, there. It's just a Monday thing. Yeah. yeah. Does that work yeah. for you, Dave? If you go yeah, to I'm Tuesday? I'm not doing anything. Yet. I'm, you, you can do it on the 20th. He's Tuesday. just hanging out at the cemetery. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you, you, may, you may be unhappy that you made this decision. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think we formally appointed you. Yeah. <laughs> well, well that, that's <laughs> okay, too. He's doing the duties that he was assigned when he became select board. Right. He's never had to do before. So, Paul, does the 26th work for you? Are you going? Um, yeah, there was a training session at Killington for tabulator stuff, but I've already been to two of them, so I can, yeah, I can do Tuesday. That doesn't affect your golf, um? Oh, that's right, Tuesday night, uh, golf league, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's sad that I know your golf schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Therese, we had him on Tuesday, too. Well, I didn't want to goof him up. Um, <laughs> the 27th on... I mean, I can do... I can't do the 27th because I have a planning commission and apparently a better connection, so I don't know how I'm going to do both at once, but let's... We might just want to jump into the next one. Roll, okay, skip the 25th and just meet August 8th. Yeah. Just cancel the meeting altogether? Yeah. So far, I only have one issue, so. 
Is, can that issue wait until the following meeting? Or I don't think that person's going to think so, but I can talk to him about it. I mean, I don't think we have anything else pressing, do we? No, I don't have anything else in the select board box for except that somebody who's on the existing water system wants to get off the water system. I gave him the legal interpretation of our ordinance, which said he couldn't, but he's still liable to pay the vacancy rate. And I, he still wants to talk to the select board slash water commissioners. I said, that's fine, but now that they have a legal opinion, I can assure you they're going to, they're, you know, because they can't set a precedent to have people leaving the system. But I did tell him I'd make him an appointment. So he, um, it's not unusual for them to have summer recess. No, it's not. So if you want to... Uh, like two rivers and one by we're all on summer recess. So, think so we'll just... Go to the 8th. Cancel the meeting on the 25th and we'll just pick it back up with the regular scheduled meeting on the 8th. I'm not aware of being in any schedule conflict, but I may not know. All right. Well, he'll be happy. He won't okay. miss a meeting, so he'll be happy. Yeah. So Gene will be happy. So that's fine. Is Lindley, Lindley available on the eighth? Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we'll we will have our next one on August eighth. I think one um, piece that I was thinking about today was because we are, you know, believe it or not, we are. Uh, Oh, if you're going to say the word budget. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are three months away from the B word. Um, the budget. So, and we do have a, a couple of um, items that we need to start discussing that could potentially affect the budget. So one being, you know, what we want to do with the constable, um, which, which, you know, kind of brings into that, you know, mm -hmm. what do we want to do with the policing yep. in the area. So I think on our August meeting, we should probably have that on there. Okay. Um, and what, did, what else did we have from that, um, from the survey that was budget related? Uh, there was I mean, we had the marijuana thing, but that would just be on warning. Right, there was zoning. So there's not much there discussion with that. Have a town meeting in front of me, a town report in front of me. Um, I'm trying to think, so there was marijuana, there was zoning, but we're already working on that. Yep. There was the constable. There was a uh, better connections thing that people responded to directly. The Australian ballot Australian stuff. Australian ballot, which isn't. So those things we, we can, can work do. on closer as we I get think to the warning piece. The other thing that will affect budget is is what we're going to do with the town garage. I need to get prices okay. to, to deal with that. So I think the town garage is going to do it. We'll. Um, and then, of course, in September you'll be making, or sooner, hopefully sooner, you'll make decisions about the generator. In the sewer pumps, and then you'll make have to yeah, make the a decision about the American plan Rescue Plan money. And okay. um, so we'll, you know, like I said, I mean, I'm pushing for roads and equipment, uh, but we'll see. But anyways, the, uh, but yeah, you're right. We need to talk about the constable budget. That's really the bigger thing. I make notes on the budget. Actually, on my spreadsheet all year as stuff comes mm -hmm. up. One of the things, too, is Dietrich does not want to continue as the pool director, so that's going to change. I think she'll end up. I'm going to see, we may end up absorbing some of her hours in the town office budget, depending on what she, you know, what, what she wants to do of her schedule. And then that will change too. So there'd be somebody seasonal, so there would be no bennies, but overseeing some of the pool and, yeah. and that sort of thing. Because Randolph apparently does not have, is not doing swimming lessons this year. I'm not even sure if Randolph Pool is open. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, but they're not doing swimming lessons, so we've been mm, inundated. Interesting. Inundated with that. Um, so, also, too, was looking to, it'll be another salary thing, which is going to a fourth person for the road crew. Right. So, there's a couple things in there, you know, that I've been tracking for the budget to talk about. But, like I said, I make notes all year long that I just, it's just mm -hmm. easier to remember. Okay. But I will put constable on for the next budget, or for the next, um, for the August 8th meeting. Along with the rules for the cemetery. Maybe by then, Dave, you'll have some, between Paul's stuff and you being there, you'll have some ideas about that. All right. 
Have we heard any feedback in regards to the health commissioner and how things are going on that end? Or Seems to be going well. He's very organized. He comes in. He has a file there and files his paperwork. And um, I, I know, I think at one point he met with Paul, so they had an issue. But frank, frankly, I don't, I just, it's nothing to do with me. I stay out of it. But it sounds like you guys are doing Yeah, well. I touch base with him every few weeks just to see. And I go into the file and look and see what he's been up to. And he's, uh, yeah, he's very thorough with his documentation. And why not? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other business to come before the board? Thanks for making it a short period. <laughs> it's not over yet. Anybody can pop in at any second. Move to adjourn. Yeah. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. See, See you later. later. Take care.